lesson two, you will be introducing your students to the concept of the atomic number. The atomic number indicates the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons found in various atoms of elements on the periodic table. A fun hands-on way to have your students practice locating and, and finding the atomic number for these various elements is to make models of them using Play-Doh. You can use store-bought Play-Doh to make these models or you can make your own Play-Doh using the simple Play-Doh recipe found in your teacher edition on page 39. We have a copy here. Ingredients you'll need to make the Play-Doh is a cup of white flour, fourth a cup of salt, two tablespoons of cream of tartar, tablespoon of oil, a cup of water, and a few drops of food coloring. So we have just regular vegetable oil, cream of tartar, white flour, water, salt, it doesn't matter if it's plain salt or iodized salt, and then food coloring. If you're making uh, this Play-Doh for a classroom of students, you may plan on making at least three batches. If you're just making it for your single child or one or two students, one batch will do. The idea here is to create Play-Doh in at least three different colors. One color for each of the subatomic particles. So if you're making for a classroom of students, make each batch a different color. If you're making uh, one batch, a single batch, just for your own student or one or two students, you'll divide up the dough after you make it and mix in the uh, food coloring later. Let's go ahead and measure out our ingredients into a saucepan now. We'll begin with our dry ingredients first. The first was a cup of white flour. And these uh, measurements don't have to be exact. This is a pretty forgiving recipe here. So we'll start with a cup of white flour. We need a little bit more. Next on our recipe we have a fourth of a cup of salt. This is a great recipe you can allow your students to do too and make it a lab for them. Fourth of a cup, talk about fractions here. Fourth of a cup of salt. Next we have two tablespoons of cream of tartar. Two tablespoons. Next we have a tablespoon of oil. Alright, and last we have a cup of water. Then with a wooden spoon, we'll stir our ingredients and then we'll take them over to the cook stove and begin to heat it. We're going to begin heating our Play-Doh mixture on the cook surface over medium heat, stirring. At first it'll look really lumpy and then as it heats it'll form a ball in the center. Turn off the heat. Continue stirring. It'll form one solid ball then in the center. What we'll do next is we'll take it out 
and we'll place it on a floured surface and knead it uh, until it forms one pliable uh, ball of Play-Doh for us. What we'll do next is just uh, dump our glob of Play-Doh out onto a floured, floured surface. So I've just taken some uh, freezer paper here. You can use wax paper or a piece of foil. And we're just going to push that right out onto the surface there. And then put your uh, saucepan in some water so it can make it easier to clean. Now the dough is going to be pretty warm to start with so you'll need to be careful that you don't burn yourself and if you have your students doing this is to make sure that they're aware that the the dough is going to be pretty hot to start with. And then all you do is just start kneading it and it'll turn into a nice nice ball of play-doh for you. It's a little sticky, you can add a little more flour to it, but usually usually it forms up really nice into a, a nice rubbery ball. Now, if, uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you're uh, just doing this activity with one or two students, at this point is where you'll want to divide the dough into three pieces, three uh, pieces, and then you will use the food coloring and color your three pieces uh, into three different colors and it usually takes quite a bit of food coloring to color the dough and uh, you can allow your students to choose the colors that they would like if you're doing this with a large group of kids you can repeat this process of making the play-doh two more times so you have uh, plenty of play-doh for everyone now the the activity is simple that you use the play-doh for Basically what you're going to do is uh, indicate a certain element on the periodic table. Uh, your students will locate that element and then find its atomic number and then uh, pinch off little balls of Play-Doh to represent the number of protons, neutrons, and electrons found by an atom of that element. So for example, if you did carbon and let's say uh, this ball here would represent the protons and then so the students would take and make uh, six little balls representing the uh, protons for carbon and then if uh, this represented the neutrons then they would make six of these and then so then they would cluster those into the nucleus of the atom and then again referring to carbon having six electrons they would take whichever color represents electrons and then pinch off six electrons there. Now one thing you can do at this point also uh, you'll have discussed how the electrons are much lighter in weight than the other subatomic particles so you can have your students make those electrons uh, as a little smaller than the protons and the neutrons. Ready? Then um, once they get that model created, uh, you can have them take and put the colors back together into one and uh, choose another element. An activity you can do which kind of leads up into an activity that comes uh, a little later in the course is make uh, Play-Doh models of their birthday atom. The uh, birthday atom is the element that ha is, has the same atomic number as the day of the month at which they were born. So for example if a student was born on the 10th of the month they would look at atomic number 10 which is neon and then build an atom uh, for neon. So it would have the 10 protons, 10 neutrons, and 10 electrons. One point that you may want to bring out is that number of neutrons there can vary and uh, there's different ways for calculating the number of neutrons. We're going along with the kind of a generalized theory that the number of protons and neutrons and electrons is the same but in, in actuality those neutron numbers can vary up and down and that's where the idea of isotopes comes into play. So, oh one other thing when you're done with the play-doh you can put it in Ziploc uh, bags keep it in the refrigerator and it lasts a good long time uh, there's other games you can play with it along the way if you like kind of a teamwork game if you uh, are interested in that where uh, one 
uh, one table of students, uh, or each, you have three tables of students, and you call out an element name, and one, one table of students is, is in charge of creating the number of protons, one makes neutrons, and one makes electrons, and then they collaborate to come up with one model, and whichever team can do that for you first with accuracy earns two points, and other teams can earn one point. So that's just a teamwork game that uh, you can use to uh, practice creating these models which represent atomic numbers of subatomic particles found in the various elements on the periodic table. Enjoy your time with your students. Uh, remember it's part of their job to help you clean up when you're done and then things will go quite smoothly for you. Mm -hmm.